Now do you have sound? I had my I had my um, mic off for some reason. I'm gonna give it a second. Let me see if you can now hear me. There we go. Perfect, perfect. Me and my me and my speakers off. Oh my gosh. I um I recorded the whole live for tonight. Hey Ann. So I recorded the whole live for tonight and started putting it into my presentation software and playing it back. Hey Carla, and guess what? I didn't have my mic on. So I had to make another whole one and record the whole thing all over again. Is that not perfect? So, but I loved it anyway because it was gorgeous, so. All right, so I have a couple things Let's see, Laura Gabarik. I just received my first order from you and the quality is top notch. I definitely love your products. I definitely love your comment. It's been such a bad day. I could really use comments like that. I love it. Thank you. I'm so happy that you love them. Don't forget to tune in here to see how to use them all. An example, I'm not sure what you ordered, but you know, our hybrid babies had just come out. Whoa. Which the octagon one came out first and with a template. And I want to show you just real quickly what a perfect size little dessert dish that these make. Um, perfect little dessert dishes. These are um, the five inch and this one was the three deep. Um, and we will be coming out with the square. Look at this square. Uh, well, this one is this one is our new template, which is picture perfect because it just puts a perfect little picture frame around that with our newest um, Easter pin, which is the Easter pins available. But the square is not yet, uh, nor the template, but they will be coming. But look at this perfect size little dish. And I just put little Easter eggy feet on it, but. They're just the perfect size, but dynamite comes in small packages. And what I mean by that is I'm going to take one of these tonight and I'm not making a little old dish like this. I'm going to be making a dish that's 15, 16, 17 inches across with this. So it does make these little bitty dishes, but it also makes big things, but ow. Ow, ow, I slammed my finger. But I do want to um, show you. These little bitty dishes are perfect. Uh-oh, you hear peanut in there? But they need a little bitty spoon. And look at this perfect, perfect little spoon for this. Um, and I'm going to show you. Look at how perfect this little spoon is. Now, it's not been bisque fired, um, obviously, or glazed yet, but I want to show you. I use scrap colored clay, and look at that. So when it's fired, and I don't know what the back is going to look like. Oh, look at the colored, the colors on the back of that. So, oh, peanuts in there barking at the other dogs. So I wanted to show you real quick how to create this little spoon for this perfect little dish. Look at this, what a perfect. Okay, I do not create the spoon maker. However, if you, let me go here. So if you go to, I make art I make stuff dot or or golly gosh, let me start over. It's been one of those days, guys. I make stuff dot art. And if you use the code Sharon Hoppy Designs, make sure you put an S on the end of it, 15, you will get a 15% discount. He or his partner, other half, saw me using his little ball shape, ball form, which is this. Um, and I used it to make the bells that his girlfriend had made online. 
and I made those on one of my lives. And so he contacted me and asked me if I would be interested in offering a discount to my groups. I said, sure. Um, I am not getting any kind of commission. I did not, I told him I didn't want one. I just want to pass the savings to you guys. So Sharon Hoppy Designs 15 at imakestuff.art and you can get a 15% discount. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of the other things I've actually made with his stuff. Where'd my little heart go? Oh, there it is. Peanut. Tanner, come over here so Peanut will stop barking. Okay. So, this itty bitty heart that I put holes through because I'm going to make it a pendant. Who... The discount works. It, it was actually my fourth order to him. Awesome. Okay. So the little heart is he, this. And he makes forms littler, littler than I do. So it's a perfect combination. And this one, look what that'll be. That's one side. Look at that. That's the other side. And then he makes them that, you know, I've, I've shown you, uh, or I've shown my Slab to Fab group making the puffy hearts. Well, let me spray this one because this one's going to be nice and colorful too. Look at that. Woo! But he also has one that is this, which is this one, um, that you can make those little puffy hearts with. Um... And it gets harder to use as they get a little bit bigger, but this size is, is still a good size um, to make that size puffy heart. So those are really fun. And I know a lot of you may have seen them already because I see people saying I've already ordered. Um, so I was going to make the spoon for you guys but i'm well i'll just make it really quick just to show you but then we're going to move on to what our actual live is which is using a little form to make a big bowl all right let me um let me do this whoops wrong one i have a little piece oh let me do this how about, how about that? So I have a little piece of colored clay. Um, you can't see the color all that well, but you will when it's all done. And so I'm just going to show you quickly how to use this. You would want to put cornstarch in here, which I didn't. Oh, I have it right there. Let me grab the cornstarch. Might as well do this right. Bailey, get out from under my chair, please. Couldn't get in my chair because my dog was under there. Okay, so I'm going to put some cornstarch in here. You can see I've used this. It's just perfect. Perfect for my um, little dishes. I love it with my little dishes. Okay, set that down here. And then I have this. You can do several things. You can wad up clay and just stuff it in here. Or you can use a slab and stuff in if you want it a little thinner. And I'm just going to kind of put that in there like that. I have been messing with blackberries, so my fingers are purple. And this, the spoon part, you want to fill that good. You want to make sure that's filled in. And if you don't have enough, take a little piece off and just put it where it needs to go. And go over the top with this because you're going to scrape it off anyway. And so then you take the little push plate, push thing, and go in 
and I like to kind of wiggle it around. Oh gosh, my whole table's wiggling. I like to wiggle it around and get it nice and smooth in there. And I see that here I have a little hole. So I'm going to just take a piece of clay and stuff in there. Maybe a little piece more of color. And just stuff it in there like so. And then just go back in with my little push tool. I'm not sure what he calls those. And I'm going to smooth that in with my thumb. And you see the spoon starting to appear. And so then what I do, I'm just using a, a scalpel at this point. You can use anything. And I'm going to come in and just scrape across the top with that. And peel that off. And I lay, I lay my scalpel flat on this. So take some of this off so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to put my scalpel down. You could use a needle tool, a knife, or anything. Push it down and just come straight across just like that. I'm ambidextrous, so I'm switching hands. And then if you see you're not completely filled in, then just stick a little more clay. I'm going to go for some blue clay right there. Just put it on. This one looks done. That one's perfect. I got a little tiny hole right here. Smear that in. And look at that. Look at that spoon. Now, you can't tell, but it'll be gorgeous with all the colored clay. These are scraps that I had. It'll be gorgeous when it's done. And then you just push it out this back. Rhonda, let me flip to the other one. I make, I make stuff.art. And if you use Sharon Hoppy Designs 15, you'll get a 15% discount. Whoops, where was I at? There we are. All right. So I'm going to pull this out. And then you have to be careful. And hopefully I put enough. Um, I'm just smoothing that down. Hopefully I put enough cornstarch. And what I do is I just kind of press up and wiggle. And there's one piece, one half off. Um, the discount, Rhonda? Yes, that's because um, I told him I didn't want part of it. So he gave the discount all to you guys. And there's the back side. And there's the front side. And so what I'll do is I will set this down and let it uh, get leather hard. And then I'll go in and smooth this out. Because, because I have colored clay, I don't really want to be smoothing it out with a wet sponge right now. I'm going to show you. It will smooth right over and, and be perfect. But if I'm doing that with colored clay, I'm going to smear the color, so I'm going to wait. But that's how easy it is to make that spoon. So, I make stuff.art. Use Sharon Happy Designs 15, and you'll get a 15% discount. Now, I'm going to put this away. I'm going to put this up. I showed you the hearts and everything else that he makes. And the little ball with the jingle. Oh, I, you gotta hear this, guys. Because it really jingles. I don't know if you can hear that. Oops. 
Woohoo! So, all right. So there's that, and I'm gonna put this spoon aside, and we are gonna go on to our normal broadcast. Love these babies with this size spoon. Um, but. Babies are wonderful, but sometimes big bowls are wonderful. So I'm going to show you the versatility of this little baby form. Um, oh, by the way, ramen bowls, four high, coming soon to a theater near you. Um, Mr. Wilson is doing better. Um, obviously, we did not get to go to um, Alabama, which was really sad for us was really sad for us. Um, we did send a big box full of some giveaways uh, for Stacy to um, do giveaways with. So if, um, if you are going to Alabama or are at Alabama, find Stacy Morgan and ask her where and how she's gonna do the giveaways because we sent pins and forms and templates and all kinds of stuff. So go find Stacy. How you're gonna make a big bowl? Who was saying that? Um, who said they can't? Oh, Kathleen. Well, I I'm gonna show you how to make a big bowl, and a big bowl it is, 15 to 17 inches across, using the five and a half inch or five inch baby. So let's get on to the first one, which if you're new to clay or new to our group, always prep your clay. So we always start with a prep your clay video. It's about a mm, minute long. If you already know how to prep your clay, now's the time to go grab a snack and be right back. Okay, I am back. And I say I'm back on the first video because I recorded this whole thing and realized my mic wasn't on. So I'm making another one. Um, so I will have two, which just gives us many more glaze options. So what I did was I cleaned my yellow rib. You always want to make sure it's clean so you don't get things dragging across your clay. And this is a big slab that I'm just going to compress. Get all the marks and textures and things like that out of it. We do this every single time. So any of you that are new on my live or new to clay, you always want to compress your clay. Every project. I'm going to take the clay off of that. And now I'm going to flip this. Now normally, because this slab is so big, normally I would put another board and sandwich it. But I'm going to hit my camera if I do that. So I'm going to have to try to lift this and flip it. I'm going to try to come straight up and over with as minimal folding as possible just like that that's not ideal but it works now I'm going to compress this side this is just a little quick video I could probably put this exact same video on every single class because it is exactly the same okay now this is a very big um, slab. Let me see if I can bring this down a little and show you how big this is to my hands. The big slab, big, big slab. Let me bring this back up some so you'll get a good view. And I'm gonna show you, we are gonna use a little bitty form to make a great big bowl in the next video. Okay. Are y'all ready for this? 
I should show you the bowl up front, but I'm maybe. Yes. Um, let me go grab it. If I drop this, I'm gonna cry. Look at this bowl. There's something in it. Look at the size of this bowl. Look at this from the bottom. Look at the size of this with my hands. Is that not gorgeous? That is this, guys. Itty bitty. So I'm gonna show you how to make this. Yes, very, very gorgeous. So these little guys grow into great big guys. Watch this. Okay, I went and set my clay aside because one, I wanted it to firm up just a little bit more, but two, I wanted to show you how I was gonna set this up. Make sure I'm nice and straight. Pull you up right there. Let's see, it's still not straight. That's a little more straight. It still kind of tilts, but I can't get that fixed. So, here's what I'm gonna do. I have my banding wheel. Oops. I dropped my peg. Let me go find it down here, hold on. Okay, got my peg. So I wanna show you a couple things. So I am gonna make a big old bowl out of this little bitty form. And I'm going to use my banding wheel. My banding wheel assist. Now, the ones we sell actually have a center hole with a peg, um, which are, um, they work in tandem. They can work if you have jar pottery banding wheel assist. If you don't, this works perfect. The one that comes with the hole. Uh, we did that by design with Jeff's permission. And um, so, I want to show you a couple things. We have a riser block. Got a peg on the bottom, peg on the top. You can put this in here, put the peg in here, and put this little form in here in this peg, and then drape your clay clear down to the wheel. But for this little bitty form, this is just a hair too tall. But if you were using the um, six and a half inch form, and draped down, that would be gorgeous. That would make a gorgeous bowl. And I have one made. I'll show it to you at the end. Remind me, remind me to show you. And it was done like this. So I'm gonna put these two aside because today I'm gonna show you again how to make a great big bowl out of this. So I'm gonna put my peg in and I'm just going to use a form. This just happens to be our new uh, form that's coming out 40. I'm going to put that on on here and I don't have anything to hold this on here but I want whatever I'm holding this on I want this that I know is going to flare out without hitting this and this is approximately um six six and a half inches tall and so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use this because i'm centered right so i have the same amount of space all the way around i've got my form centered on here i could take a little smag of clay and stick on there and hold it in place but i think it's going to be fine just like this I'm gonna make sure it's pretty even on here. And now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go grab my big slab of clay and I'm gonna hold it in my hands and I'm gonna bring it down over this very gently. So my clay is on the other side of the room, so let me go get it over here. Okay, I have it down here in my chair. I'm gonna lift it gently in my arms and I'm gonna come up over the top 
and drop this. Whoa, that's not center. That's probably more center. And I'm gonna leave it just like that. Move my board. And I'm gonna come out and get some get some big swoops in here. And how big you want them is totally totally up to you. See how I'm draping these? Like this. Getting it all nice and draped. Now that I have it draped, first thing I want to do is I want to get some of the weight off of this. Let me bring you back some. Hold on. There. Okay. And so what I've been doing is bringing this to get the folds that I want. very carefully. Now, I want to get this excess clay. You can, oop, as I stick my fingers in it. Okay, you can see like right here, right here, where the arm or where the, the banding wheel system is. So I'm going to come around and I'm going to pull those off and go up my swoops and bring them back down against the banding wheel system and get the weight off of this early on. There we go. And look at look at how pretty this is going to be. So I'm going to bring this bring this out now this one is still way out here, so I'm going to come like that. Maybe I'll scoot this back a little so you can see it. There you go. That's where I stuck my fingers in it, but that's okay. We'll fix that. Okay, come back up. Just getting it a little even and it doesn't have to be perfect this is going to be a a swoopy bowl there now look so far you move this out of my way Okay, so now that you've got the weight off of your top of your bowl, you can spend a little more time figuring, don't press in too deep with your fingers, how you want this to be. Look at that, look how pretty. So I'm gonna take my sponge in my water I'm going to wring it out as much as I can, slightly go around this top, and then I'm going to come down between the swoops very carefully, just a little bit, just to give it the impression inside there of that form, which is an octagon. So it's going to give you those little rounded edges that are here to give you in the center what's going to look like a flower started. I don't want to push it in too deep. And now I hold my hand underneath here so that I can get out any of the little baubles where I stuck my fingers. Like that one right there. I'll stick my fingers up under here 
so that I can get that out very gently just like that here's where I stuck my nails I don't know if you can see that but I certainly can this one is going to take a rib to get those out whoops piece of clay get those rib marks or the fingernail marks out and then I can come with my sponge my hands oops my hands underneath there as you can see and I'm going very lightly so that that all those little baubles are out of there using my fingers oh see that's where I stuck my fingers when I was squeezing so I'll put my hand underneath and I'll lightly sponge those out because we don't want those in there I'm doing it very lightly and we'll get the rest out when it's leather hard but see how it took most of that out look at that look how gorgeous that is if you see one you think sticks out too far and you don't like it go ahead and, and trim it up if you want again this is an organic bowl so it does not have to be perfect at all as I continue to try to make it perfect because I'm picky there you go there I like that better and the other thing is now it'll rest on this better while it's drying okay You can go around and fix it however you want to. Can you imagine what this is going to look like when it's done? All right. Now, I want to put a foot on this. And I want a kind of hefty foot because this has got a narrow base. But what's going to make it stand really well is the fact that it's balanced on the top. So it shouldn't wobble and fall over. So I'm gonna grab my battery-powered Milwaukee extruder. And I'm gonna go to the next video first. Okay, so if you've noticed, it, it's not like super round like this yet. I cut the inner areas along that banding wheel base and it looks like it's humped up on the back where I've got my little flares right so those things that swooped in are actually going to be these that swoop up remember how they swooped in that's what swoops up here and you'll see I even swoop it more because y'all know I'm a swooper and um, I wanted to show you because I told you I would this was done with the little bitty one this one I did the same thing but see the bigger base and it gives a slightly different look on the outside um, I did well I used the six and a half for for this one so if you want a bigger base use a bigger a bigger um form but this one is the the little five and look at that and i want to tell you the way that flares and it's sitting there on my <laughs> sitting there on my banding wheel that's probably not very bright but it's as stable as can be because it's so even um 
And so it gives them both such a different look. The little one gives that florally look. And this one, this one does too. It's just a different, um, a different type of floral. But I did it the exact same way I'm showing you this one. Um, I did different feet on the bottom. Um, who is that? Rhonda, let's leave those comments to the founders group, okay? We don't want those, um, we, we don't want founders things, passwords put in this group. So please nobody answer her. Uh, Rhonda, go ask that question in the, in the founders group. Thanks, babe. Okay, so let's go to putting the foot on. Okay, I am back with my extruder. As you see, I only need a little bit, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hold this. Oops. And I reloaded it, so it's gonna be a bit, oops, for it to come up. Well, it was already there, so. That's probably all that I need. Set this down. Cut it off. Set that there for a second. Because I always take my, um, top off. Where did my plastic just go? Oh, there it is. Hold on. There it is. So I like to put a couple layers of plastic over that and put it back on. Because if I get sidetracked and forget about this, it'll stay like this for several weeks without drying out that clay that's inside there. And I don't want to waste all that clay. So, now that I have my extrusion, knock that little piece off. I'm going to come with my metal serrated rib and I'm going to come around and score this. See how being on the banding wheel system is so helpful? Just spins right around there. You don't want this to go fast. You want to go slow so that you have control. See how I'm spinning that with my fingers? And I'm keeping control of that. Okay, there's that. Now, move this out of the way. Now I'm going to take my sponge on my little extrusion there. That is our triple circle braided die. We do carry those on the website. Shameful plug. And I'm just going to use my sponge and smooth this out. I'm also going to be bending it so I want it a bit moist. And I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to plop it down. Plop it down. Plop it down three or four times. That's going to make it a little bit wider. Whoops. You missed. A little bit wider. There we go. I've widened it and I have flattened the bottom side so that I won't have any air gaps in here because I'm going to use this as my foot. And yes, this is a lot more than I probably need. And that's okay. I want it to have a wide base because it's a little bit narrow for where this is going. All right, let me bring this back into view. And I'm gonna bring my prep brush. And I like to hold the sponge in my hand and tap before I put it on because I don't like to have too much water where it's gonna run down my project. So I do always tap it on my sponge. Not necessary, just a habit I've created. Now, that, move this back into view, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make sure this is nice and flipped, even though I'm just using water today. All right, now I'm gonna take my rib and I'm gonna kind of cross rib it. 
I just want a lot of grab, a lot of tooth here. That gives me a lot of tooth and I'm doing it right here as well, just to give me some extra grab. Move this, let me bring this back into play. All right. Now, again, my banding wheel system comes in handy because I'm just gonna slightly turn it. Bringing that around. I'll lift this up. And I wanna bring this little side around and come around. And I'm gonna cut this shouldn't do that with the scalpel at an angle and pull these out I'm going to take and score this and score this don't be trying to touch on them too much yet and now I'm going to push them right in where they were cut to get <clears throat> together and look at this perfect round foot and I have it kind of out as far to the edge as I can again I'm wanting more stability with this I'm going to wipe this with my sponge and if I have if it shows where the seam is I'm just going to kind of come over that a little more with my thumb. And what happens if I wipe out my line on my braid? Let me see if I can show you in here a little better. See that line right there? Okay, I'm going to bring that together with my thumb a little bit. Bring that one together. but I kind of wiped out that line. I put my rib right in that line, bring it down and kind of lift it up. It's kind of hard to see from up here. See how I put that line right back in? And people are gonna wonder, how did you do that? A little piece of excess I want to get out right there okay now I'm going to take my craft brush and come inside here and get out any extra score marks get it out any of that slip and I can watch as I do this and see that I'm getting a good connection in my joint because I definitely want that. And around this outside edge. And I'm gonna go around this several times. I want this nice and joined, but I also want it nice and blended so that it looks like it's part of this base, this bowl, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna come around with my sponge and blend this down. Again, if I wipe out part of my line, I simply take my rib very slowly, go through this line, and it puts it right back in, and people wonder, how did you keep that line? I'm gonna do this right around the bottom where I smeared it with my sponge. There you go. And again, I can do it right here. And now I'm gonna sponge in the inside a little bit. And look at that. Look at that foot. Now, I do like to take, I'll just take this little template right here. I do like to slightly press I don't want it super flat. 
I don't want it super flat, but I do want it somewhat flattened so that it will sit even and not rounded. I want to fix this right here where I went out of line with my rib. There you go. There. I see some spots. You probably can't see it from where you are, but I see it. So I want to just get it right now while I'm at it. There you go. Where I just stuck my finger. Look at this. I stuck my finger. So I just push it out from the inside slightly. Because then I'm going to have to fix it slightly on the inside. But that's okay. And there you have it. We won't do anything else to this. Um, until it dries and sets up. Oh, yes, we will. Put our stamp inside here. Look at the size of this bowl. This is from there to there. It's about 17 inches across from a 5-inch hybrid baby. This is our octagon hybrid baby we have the square coming out we have the ramen bowl coming out uh, let me show you the ramen bowl okay i cut that off because i showed you that a little while ago um also if i have any founders on here or for the founders that are on here um the founder password has been changed um since it was put up on this site this is the create group that is for founders only. I apologize to my create group, but um, so founders, if you're on here, the founders code is no longer. I will have to go create a new one and send it out to you guys via email. Please, please, please don't be putting passwords for the Slab to Fab group or founders group or any of that on the create site. This is the free site, um, but Anyway, it's been changed, so if you're trying to get on there, I have now changed it, and I will I will send out to you what it is, okay? All right, so let's, where were we? Oh, let's do some cleanup. Let me show you how I cleaned this up. We're almost running out of time, but let me show you how I was cleaning this bowl up. Okay, here is one I made a little earlier today, and uh, I need to fix that line. Here's one I made a little earlier. So I'm gonna flip this over. I'm just gonna reach underneath, grab that form, and please don't drop it. See, I have the second form setting here. Let me move that aside. Put a little tiny template so it's not so heavy. And let me move this. And look at what this is gonna look like. Now, the inside's a little messy because this is these these little lines is where it hit, was hitting the banding wheel, but that's okay. We'll fix those in a hurry. So I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to support very definitely support with my hands and sponge this. If there's See how quickly that comes out? If you have bad spots, you can always use your rib to pull that out. Look at this, look how quickly that fixes. Then go back, my hand is underneath here. See it sticking out, I'm holding it. My hand is underneath here. Look how perfect that comes out. I need to rib this little dip. Holding my hand in here. And 
and look at that. Now, how I do the edges, because I'm not going to go around and do this whole thing, because I just showed you how to do it. And look at, it's just so gorgeous, I can't even tell you. A little spot right there I want out. I'm rubbing my thumb underneath to pull that little dimple out. And then my rib over the top. Finesse that. Now you don't even see it. Okay, and I want to show you, I'm not again, I'm not gonna go around the whole thing, but I want to show you how I do the outside edge of this. And I'm very careful how I hold this. Let me come back here. Very careful how I hold this with my fingers because this is still kind of wobbly. I don't want to collapse it, but I wet the outside edge and then I take a rib that I've cut in half and make sure this is very rounded in here so you don't want to scratch into this and then I'll lay it at an angle, but I watch to make sure I'm not going to gouge it with those, with these edges. And I do this a couple times. Again, I watch. If you gouge it, I just showed you how to fix gouges a second ago anyway. But watch this. You get little boogers on there, just wipe them with your rib. Look at the edge. Look at how gorgeous that edge is. So I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna clean up these little, these little spots. I'm gonna clean up the outside edges like I just showed you. And then I'll show you a, a picture of what it looks like when it's done. Look at that, gorgeous. Okay, so that's the exact bowl and you saw how gouged up, if you will, the inside of that wool was. You saw what I showed you, how to fix it. That is this exact bowl. And do you see all of those gouges anymore? This is the exact bowl you just saw me fixing. So you saw how gouged up it was around here and doing exactly what I showed you that's what it ends up like so these bowls are not a wham bam thank you ma'am kind of bowl you have to finesse them um, a little bit because when that clay does drape down over the outside of that banding wheel it is going to put some lines in it um, this one did the same thing and look at these edges and look at these edges so love your work and go that extra mile to fix it. Let me show you, I think I showed you it all cleaned up. I think, okay, I have cleaned this up as much as I'm going to. Um, okay, I just showed you that, so I don't need to do that anymore. Yes, it does look like a morning glory. I may have to give Paula a call and say, hey, come and get this. She's coming to get some stuff uh, tomorrow to um, glaze that I've made, but I'm, I may have to have her come back and do one of these bowls the way she um, paints, uh, because I certainly don't paint that way. But I can only imagine what she could do. And I have three of these. I have this one with the wide base. This one is actually a replacement for my daughter's. Let me grab that, hold on. This is one I did that went to my daughter for Christmas. <laughs> Do you see all of this? Okay, and all of that. So I didn't like the way the back of it came out. And so I gave it to her for Christmas. I said, but leave it here because I want to refire it. And when I set it down in the kiln, put my stilts 
and I put the top um, shelf on. I did not realize the shelf was actually sitting on, on the bowl, not the stilts. And of course, it stuck and ruined her dish. But so this one, this was with the wide. So this is her replacement. And I will be glazing it the same way. This is uh, cenote. Uh, three coats of cenote. Mako cenote. And then I put um, lavender mist. Just kind of all around in there. And then I did the same thing with raspberry mist. And I don't know if you can see just how pretty that looks. But I did not like the outside. And I ruined it. So, um, she's getting a new one right now. Ding. But that is how that is. Um, yeah, Paula McCoy is a talented painter. And, um, like I said, she's coming to pick up several bisque-fired pieces to, um, to glaze. And I'm excited about that. And I think... Um, I think that's it. Oh, 557, guys. What a perfect, perfect timing. Do you guys have any questions on this? And remember, don't forget the, um, these, uh, octagon hybrids, the difference in these forms is those big rounded bottoms and the rounded side so you don't get gouges like from the octagon coming up. It's nice and soft. Um, and the baby, the octagon is available. Squares coming. The rounds are coming. I don't know if you guys, I showed you the ramen dish. We're also working on the, the mug maker. See the, see the mug maker? Um, and it's one, two, three, four, five high. One, two, three, four, five high for the mug maker with our rounded signature bottom. And this one only has two finger holes because it's too little, but it's perfect. So, um, anyway, that's coming as well. And we have another surprise coming later. Anyway, can we see the square form? Yes. I thought I had it here a minute ago. Where I thought I showed it to you guys at the beginning of this, and then I went and put it up while one of the videos was going. Where did I just stick that? Let me go see. Hold on. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Sorry guys, I had put it up during one of the videos. Okay, so the square one, see how this is all rounded off, the bottom is round, this is the five inch baby, again the double finger hole. And I use this new Picture Perfect template. I'm going to show you. This is a five inch form with the template. But this is how big. Now this is not even bis fired yet. But look at the size of this. And I don't know if you can. Maybe I can do it this way. Hold on. Do it this way. See in there? See how those rounded bottoms are? I just love them. So that's the square. We have a hexagon. Uh, yeah, hexagon's already done. And I sent all of the shapes to my uh, Slab to Fab Society for them to vote on which one would come out next. And the, the square is going to come out. And then probably the round uh, ramen bowls. So, 
that is that for tonight. Be sure and grab your baby. Um, actually, yes, be sure and get your baby because your baby does big things. We will see you next time in Create with Sharon Hoppy Designs and we'll have some new stuff. Don't forget, I make stuff.art if you want those gorgeous little spoons to go in your little dishes too. Thank you guys.